gradually become isolated in their presence and, remaining apart, they evolve independently of the intentions of the responsible beings surrounding them as well as of the beings themselves, and come to be regarded as what is called the subconscious. Single quote. It is solely on account of this behavior toward their offspring, maleficent in the objective sense, but benevolent, according to their naive subjective understanding, that all the sacred data put into them by great nature performing their real being consciousness become isolated and remain during the entire period of their existence in an almost primitive state and all the impressions inevitably perceived by means of the six being skernalit psionics or, in their terminology, sense organs, existing in their presence specifically for the perception of externals, which, by the way, they count as five, come to be localized and, acquiring their independent functioning, gradually become predominant in the whole of their common presence. Although this, localization, of accidentally perceived impressions exists in them and they are aware of its action, it plays no part in any functioning inherent in their planetary body or in the acquisition in their common presence of objective reason. All these impressions intentionally or accidentally perceived, from which this localization is formed, should serve only as material for the confrontative logic of that real being consciousness which they ought to have in themselves, and which sometimes produces accidental results that they, in their naivete, now confidently regard as mere reflexes of their what is called, animal instinct, quite insignificant in their opinion. Thanks only to the fact that your favorites, especially the contemporary ones, do not know or even suspect the necessity at least to adapt their famous education to the subconscious of their offspring but always and in everything intentionally help every one of the rising generation to perceive impressions only from what is abnormally artificial. When any one of them reaches responsible age all his being judgments and the deductions he draws from them are purely subjective and these judgments and deductions have no connection either with the genuine being impulses arising in him, or with those lawful cosmic phenomena that it is proper to the reason of every three brain being to sense and by means of which a bond is established between all the three brain beings of our great universe for the collective fulfillment of the common universal functioning, for which purpose everything existing in the universe exists. For your broader understanding of this particular, psychic state, so disastrous for your favorites, I must tell you that they arise, even today, with every kind of data for acquiring genuine being reason, and that their arising their presence does not as yet contain any logic Nestarian groups, from which later their false consciousness is localized and acquires an independent functioning and it is only after this that during their development and preparation to become responsible beings, either by themselves or under the intent. Tional direction of their parents, or teachers, that is, those beings who undertake to prepare them for responsible existence, they begin to take in and fix exclusively those impressions which are data for impulses corresponding to the abnormally established conditions surrounding them and from then on there is gradually formed and predominates in their common presence this artificially formed consciousness of theirs. And as for the totality of the spiritualized data localized in their presence for the purpose of genuine being consciousness, which they call the subconscious, since it neither has nor acquires any logic Nestarian growths, 
for confrontation and criticism, but from the very beginning has only the possibility of engendering the sacred being impulses called faith, love, hope, and conscience. It always believes, always loves, and always hopes in everything newly perceived. of their blood circulation, it is possible to suspend for a time the action of the localization of their false consciousness, now the sovereign master of their common presence, thus enabling the sacred data of their genuine consciousness to blend freely with the general functioning of their planetary body during their waking state, and if one then assists, in the required way, the crystallization of data which give rise in this localization to an idea contrary to what is already fixed there, and if one directs the action of this idea to a disharmonized part of the planetary body, one can bring about in that part a rapid change in the blood circulation. During the period of the Tikliamitian civilization, when the learned beings of the country of Maralplisi discovered for the first time this possibility of combinations in their general psyche and tried to put each other at will into this special state, they soon found out and understood how to obtain it with the help of what is called being handled zoin. That is to say, that cosmic substance which in its essence the three brain beings of contemporary civilization came very close to understanding and which they called animal magnetism. Now, my boy, I find it necessary for the given case and also perhaps for my further explanations to inform you in more detail about the cosmic substance called being handledzoin. Handbloodzoin is nothing else than the blood of the question body of the being, and just as the sum total of cosmic substances called blood serves for the nourishment and renewal of the planetary body of the being, so in the same way, handbloodzoin serves for nourishing and perfecting the question body. You should know that in general the quality of the composition of the blood in the common presence of your favorites, as in all three brain beings, depends on the number of being bodies already completely formed in them. Blood, in the presence of three brain beings, may be composed of substances arising from the transformation of three distinct and independent, cosmic sources of actualization. The substances of that part of the being blood designed by nature for serving the planetary body arise from the transformation of substances of that planet on which the given being is formed and exists. But the substances designed for serving the question body of the being, which in their totality are called handbloodzoin, are obtained from the transformation of elements of other planets and of the sun itself of that system where this free brain being has the place of his arising and existence. Finally, that part of the being blood which almost everywhere is called the sacred, Iasoclodon, and which serves the highest part of the being called the soul, derives from the direct emanations of our most holy Son Absolute. Substances required for the blood of the planetary body of beings enter into them through their first being Ku, or what your favorites simply call Ku. Single quote. But the substances needed both for coating and for perfecting the higher being body, that is, the question body, enter into their common presence through their breathing, and through certain what are called pores of the skin. As for the sacred cosmic substances required for the coating of the highest being body, which they call the 
sold, these substances can be assimilated and correspondingly transformed and coded in them, just as in us, only through the process of what is called Ayasiratorish in contemplation, actualized in their common presence with the conscious participation of their three independent spiritualized parts. You will be able to understand about all those cosmic substances with which the three independent being bodies are coated and perfected in the common presences of certain of your favorites only when, as I have already promised, I tell you about the fundamental cosmic laws of world creation and world existence, nevertheless, to throw more light on our present subject. It is necessary to explain a little about the changed form of actualization in the common presence of your favorites of the second being food, automatically taken in by them. At first, after the destruction of the organ Kundabuffer, when they, like all the other three brain beings of our great universe, had a Phileas Semtamian existence, the second being who was transformed normally, and all the principal elements composing it, those which arise from transformations on their own planet and those which flow into their atmosphere from transformations in other concentrations of their solar system, were assimilated by their common presences according to definite data already in them, and the surplus of certain of the component elements of this food, not used by individual beings, passed automatically, as with us, into the possession of meritorious beings around them. As I have already said, when most of them began to exist in a manner unbecoming to three brain beings, great nature was constrained to change their Phileia Semtamnian existence into an existence according to the principle of Etoclonauts and from then on, in the presence of most of them, owing to their abnormal being existence, those definite crystallizations foreseen by great nature which compose the most important part of the second being food in which, when assimilated by beings, are transformed into substances for the coating and perfecting of their question body, gradually cease to be assimilated either consciously or automatically for this purpose and since these substances, transformed in other cosmic concentrations, kept on flowing all the time into the atmosphere of their planet, there arose in recent centuries among your unfortunate favorites yet another new disease, with especially harmful action upon them. The point is that, not being used up for their predetermined purpose, these definite cosmic crystallizations, in the course of displacements of the atmosphere, concentrate in certain atmospheric strata and enter into your favorites, from time to time, in accordance with external surrounding conditions as well as with the inner state of their common presence which by the way depends chiefly on the form of their mutual relationships and so these cosmic crystallizations enter into them as into apparatuses foreordained by nature for the transformation of cosmic substances needed for serving the aims of the most great common cosmic trogoatogocrat and not meeting with substrata that correspond to the requirements of the lawful process of jarklam and thanks to other accidental factors these crystallizations during their subsequent evolutionary or involutionary transformations into new crystallizations proper to this planet even before these transformations are complete produce upon planetary bodies the action which is characteristic of this specific new disease. Here perhaps I should add that this disease, 
with such a definite cause, was given different names by your favorites at different times on various parts of the surface of your planet, and the contemporary beings likewise give it different names and wiseacre in all sorts of ways to explain its origin. Among the many names for this disease of theirs the most widely used at the present time are, grip, influenza, Spanish influenza, dengue, and others. As regards the second kind of being food, the absorption of which continues among beings even until now, ever since your favorites lost the possibility of existing according to the full Asnatamnian principle certain of its elements continue to serve only for assisting the transformation of the first being food and for removing from the planetary body certain elements that have already been utilized. Now, my boys, let us come back to that particular psychic property of your favorites, and the way in which I made use of it for my activities among them at that time in the capacity of a specialist in hypnotism. Although this hypnotism, or, as they prefer to say, this branch of their science, arose and became official only recently, it has already become another of the serious factors for a still greater confusion of the psyche of most of them, confused enough without this, and for deranging still further the functioning of their planetary body. After I had become one of these professionals called a physician hypnotist, I grew quite interested in this official science of theirs, and later, when I made my usual investigations of certain serious questions, for instance, of the results of the activities of the very saintly Ashiata Shemash, and I chanced to come across something bearing upon this branch of their science. I was also able to make clear to my reason this, misunderstanding, there. Since the impelling causes of the revival of this branch of their science, which occurred automatically as is usual today, consisted in certain exceedingly peculiar and, as they might say, piquant facts, it will be interesting in my opinion to tell you in more detail about this revival. Although contemporary learned beings maintain that the originator of this branch of their science was a certain English professor named Braid and that it was developed by the French physician Chacot, in reality this was not so at all. My detailed investigations of this question, by the way, made it clear to me that the former, Bray, had unmistakable signs of the properties of a Hasnamus, and the latter, Chateau, the typical properties of a Mama's Darling, and terrestrial types like this could never have discovered anything completely new. As a matter of fact, it appeared that what happened was the following. A certain Italian abbot, Padrini by name, was what is called a confessor for a convent in his town. A nun named Ephrosinia often came to this abbot for confession. As the story went, it seems that she frequently fell into a certain particular state, and while in this state she displayed manifestations unusual for her environment. During confession she complained to the abbot Padrini that at times she felt herself unmistakably under the influence of diabolical suggestions. Everything she told him and the stories circulated about her intrigued the abbot Padrini, and he became very much interested in verifying it all for himself. One day, during confession, he tried by every possible means to evoke sincerity in this nun, and succeeded in find. Ing out that this young, novice, once had a lover, 
who had given her his portrait in a very beautiful frame, and that during periods of rest, from her prayers she allowed herself to gaze at this picture of her sweetheart, and it was just during these periods of rest, that it seemed to her that she became possessed of the devil. All of this, frankly told by the nun, excited the abbot's interest still further, and he decided at all costs to find out the cause of this phenomenon with this aim in view he asked the nun Ephrosinia to be sure to bring with her the next time the portrait of her lover, in its frame. So at the next confession the nun brought this portrait, there was nothing very special about the portrait itself, but the frame was indeed unusual, being all encrusted with mother of pearl and various colored stones. While the abbot and the nun were both examining the portrait and its frame, he suddenly noticed that something very strange was happening to the nun. First she became pale and for a certain time as if turned to stone, and then all at once there began in her precisely the same manifestations, in all details, as occur between the newly married on what is called the first night. After seeing this, the abbot Padrini was all the more consumed with desire to understand the causes of such an astonishing manifestation. But as for the nun, two hours after this strange state of hers began, she recovered, and it was evident that she knew and remembered nothing of what had happened to he. R. As the abbot could not decipher this phenomenon by himself, he turned for help to one of his acquaintances, a certain Dr. Bambini. Well, when the abbot Cabrini told everything in detail to the Dr. Bambini, he also became very much interested, and they both began to occupy themselves with this question. They first made a number of elucidatory experiments upon the nun Ephrosinia, and after several what are called seances, they noticed that this nun invariably fell into this peculiar state when her gaze rested rather a long time on one of the brilliant colored stones called a Persian turquoise, which was among the ornaments on the frame of the portrait. But later, when they made experiments upon other people with this same Persian turquoise, they became categorically convinced that almost any free-brained being, without distinction of sex, who gazes for a long time at shining and brilliant objects of certain kinds, falls into a state similar to the one that proceeded in the first subject of their experiments. Furthermore, they noticed that the manifestations during this state vary with each subject and depend on the being experiences that were predominant on some former occasion, and on the shining objects with which a connection was accidentally established during these experiences of theirs. Well, my boy, as soon as information about the observations, deductions, and experiments of these two beings belonging to the community of Italy, spread among the contemporary, learned beings of new formation, many of them began to wiseacre about it, and when by chance, as is usual for them, they finally learn that in this state it is possible to change formerly fixed impressions very quickly into new ones. Certain of them began to use this particular psychic property, inherent in them, for medical purposes. And from then on, they called this mode of healing, hypnotic treatment, and those beings who practiced it were known as physician hypnotists, but what this state of theirs is and why it occurs in them remains even up till now a question that they cannot answer. From that time on hundreds of theories, still current today, 
made their appearance, as well as thousands of heavy volumes devoted to this question, muddling still further the reason of the ordinary three-brained beings of this ill-fated planet, already sufficiently muddled without that. This branch of their science has come to be perhaps even more maleficent for them than the fantastic inventions of the ancient Hellenic fishermen and of the contemporary beings of the community of Germany. Thanks merely to this branch of their science, there were acquired in the psyche of the ordinary beings of this ill-fated planet several new forms of what are called being calculi, that is, essential strivings, which appeared in the guise of certain definite new teachings existing under the names of Anaclinism, Darwinism, Anthroposophism, Theosophism, and many others with names also ending in ism, with the result that even those two data in their presence, which still help them to be at least a little as three-centered beings should be, have finally disappeared in them. These essential data, which until quite recently have been present in them, engendered the being impulses they call, patriarchality, and, religious feeling. Single quote. This branch of their contemporary science was the cause not only of the appearance of several additional and pernicious, calculi, in their common presence, but also of the further derangement in many of them of the abnormal functioning of their psyche, which to their great misfortune had long since been disharmonized to the degree of Alnoporian cacophony. You will understand this very well if I tell you that when I was existing on the continent called Europe, and in neighboring countries, and was again practicing as a specialist in hypnotism, almost half my patients were ill on account of the wide dissemination of that maleficent science. And this came about because the learned beings of new formation were writing many books full of preposterous theories about this question and when the ordinary beings read them they became infatuated with these fantasies and began trying to put each other into this hypnotic state, thus bringing themselves to the point of becoming my patients. Among such patients of mine were women whose husbands, having chance to read these works, wished to suggest their egoistic desires to their wives, also the children of unreasonable parents, and various men who were under the sway or, as is said there, under the thumb, of their mistresses, and so on and so forth and all this because these sorry, learned beings of new formation, cooked up their Hasnamusian theories about this distressing state of theirs. None of the theories current among them on the question of hypnotism corresponds in the least to reality. Most recently, by the way, when I was on this unfortunate planet, a new maleficent means began to nourish there for producing on the psyche of beings the same effect as was and still is produced through that branch of their science called, hypnotism. Single quote. And this new maleficent means is named, psychoanalysis. You must without fail also know that when the beings of the period of the Tikhlimitian civilization observed this peculiar psychic property for the first time, and understood that by its means certain other properties particularly unbecoming to them could be destroyed, the process of bringing someone into this state came to be regarded as a sacred process and was performed only in their temples before the whole congregation. But your contemporary favorites, on the contrary, do not feel in their presence the slightest, being impulse of contrition, in regard to this property of theirs, nor do they consider as, 
sacred, its concentrated manifestation, when intentionally evoked in case of need, and they have even adapted the process itself and its accidentally obtained results for serving as a means of tickling certain of the definitively fixed consequences of the properties of the